I think we all have a story to share. And I hope that my story brings courage to people to number one, understand that it's okay not to be okay. For me, uh, being born without limbs uh, was obviously a big shock to my parents and they didn't know exactly what to do, but they loved me, they encouraged me, and uh, as a kid, I didn't think that I was different than anybody else. Um, I knew I looked different, but when I went to school, there were some kids that actually um, made me feel a little awkward and different and I thought that different maybe wasn't good. And so um, I had my little foot that allowed me to walk around and swim and my parents always said, Nick, we don't know what you can achieve until you try it. And so they always were there to give me comfort and encourage me and give me confidence and courage to, to try things. So I have a very uh, large family, um, Serbian background, uh, so 20 first cousins and we would get together every Sunday after church and uh, you know play soccer with tennis ball or go into a pool and uh, I had a lot of good basically friendships through family um, you know school kids are school kids but I felt like I always had a safe place to grow up with my family and my relatives my uncles and my aunts and so uh, my dad actually though was the first person to teach me how to float and giving me the courage to just angle my head correctly because I don't have limbs to weigh me down and so my parents were courageous as well. I think everything that I tried to learn was difficult at first. I think that's how life is always with anything. Um, I think it, 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 it's a moment in our life where it's not just surviving what you're going through, but it's building up the resiliency in understanding that failure is not a status or a conclusion. When you adopt that failure is your classroom and you realize that your journey in life is really based on many decisions that you have to make to really say, okay, either I try or I never try. And these things are the little decisions that I made with little things that have helped me to make the big decisions that I make today. The biggest difficulty in my life was especially between ages 8 and 12, where I looked at the future of my life and I never thought that I'd ever be happy, never thought that I'd get a job, never thought that I would get married. I thought even if I got married, I can't even hold my wife's hand. Even if I had children, how can I hold them when they're crying? And so I concluded based on what I saw in the future that I didn't have much to live for. Um, I attempted suicide in 15 centimeters of water, tried to drown myself at age 10. And uh, the only reason why I didn't go through with that um, was not that I physically, physically couldn't do it, um, but I didn't want to leave that pain behind for my parents. Um, it's one thing to have a limbless boy and that's difficult, but I can't imagine having a limbless boy who actually decides to take his own life and nothing can ever heal a parent's heart from that. You know, bullying happens everywhere, all around the world. This is my 81st country and I've been now with 30 different uh, presidents, vice presidents and prime ministers. And I actually talk to education ministries, uh, departments about, you know, understanding that bullying affects us more than we think and it shouldn't be part of our culture it shouldn't just be accepted it shouldn't be cool to put someone else down uh, no one is more important than anybody else and no one is less important than anybody else and unfortunately as i've gone through 1000 school presentations globally i really helped the school understand that bullying and gossip it doesn't make you more cool you have no idea what disabilities other people have. You can see my disability, but I don't know who has no mum, who has no dad, who's maybe even been sexually abused, uh, who feels isolated and depressed. 
people are not going to openly tell you what's really going on in their heart, in their mind. And so why be a part of someone's reason to feel like there is no hope? We sometimes think that bullying doesn't affect people, but it does. And so my parents always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. And I tell teenagers all the time, if you really want to make a difference in the world, then make a world of difference in your own school. And until you actually realize that your words have power, that your eye contact with people at school has power, um, that your friendship, your encouragement can make a difference, but definitely those negative words, don't do that. And it's wonderful to see how schools change their heart. And there are three schools that actually have a Nick Vujicic day. The day that I came and I spoke and they never teased again for years onward. You know, I had the advantage of understanding that people, um, they were judging me for how I looked. And I quickly realized that I shouldn't judge anybody for how they look. They were not my friend because of how I looked or I wasn't okay to them. And then I realized we all need hope. Um, I didn't go out of my way to encourage people um, until later on in life. You know, actually, um, it was the person who was cleaning the toilets at my high school who saw that I was the vice president of the student government body le leadership. And I did a speech and uh, he pulled me aside later and he said, you're a good speaker. I said, oh, thank you very much. He said, no, 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 you have a story to share. I said, no, I don't. He said, yeah, you're going to travel the world and you're going to give hope to many people. And he, for three months, begged me to actually go to a speech that he set up, just a couple students, and just shared about my life journey and how I did not give up and had, we're all beautiful just the way that we are. And people cried. And then my phone started ringing and uh, people invited me here, people invited me there. And I never thought I'd be a speaker. I was a mathematician. I was a chess player. I was going to do accounting and financial planning. I'm a businessman. I have six companies. I do real estate. I do stocks. But I never thought that I would actually be a speaker. And I'm so glad that I think we all have a story to share. And I hope that my story brings courage to people to number one, understand that it's okay not to be okay. You need to talk to someone. Sometimes in our culture, sometimes in our homes, we're not really encouraged to talk about our feelings or what we're really going through. And most of us are convinced that even if we did tell someone what we're really going through, it wouldn't help anyway. But if you give your broken pieces a chance, you don't need to do this on your own. And uh, that's the, the hope message for everybody, no matter who you are, no matter what you're going through, that there is hope for you and you don't have to go through those dark valleys alone. You know, when I was 19 years old, um, I decided that this was a very big part of my mission. And the way that that happened was when I was at a public school in Australia. And in public schools, you're not allowed to talk about Jesus. And I knew I'm, I'm religious, but everyone else, everyone has different religion. But love is very important. And this one girl came up and she said, thank you. No one's ever told me that they love me. No one's ever told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am. And that's when I did know I was going to become a speaker. Now, did I know that I was going to reach the world? I bought the URL, www.7billionsouls.com. And now we have 8billionsouls.com. And I've traveled now to 81 countries, 3,500 stages. Uh, a billion people in China know who I am. A billion people in India know who I am. Another 800 million people outside of those two countries. So out of 8 billion people, quite a lot of people know something about Nick Vujicic. And I'm glad. I'm 40 years old. I have a wife and four kids. Uh, and I'm glad that with technology, um, and incredible opportunities to go on media channels like yours that we can reach millions. Um, I think this is a purpose that we all can do our own little part in because I really believe 
Everyone has a story. Not everyone will be on TV. Not everyone will have a book um, or be a speaker. But we all have something to share with somebody. As difficult as my job seems to be, um, I'm very thankful that I've learned how to time manage and have a good balance in life. Um, every summer, I don't work for two months. And every winter, I do not work for two months. And uh, so I only really work spring and fall. Um, but, you know, it's still very busy and I love what I do. Um, and I do not sacrifice my family nor my marriage for my mission. Uh, my greatest mission of all is to love my wife and make her feel loved. Uh, that's my biggest mission. And the second mission is to love my kids and make them feel loved. Third, love the world as best as you can. These days, um, I'm not traveling as much as I used to. Um, I have some interesting ventures, um, some entrepreneurship ventures, and we are a little angry at some big companies around the world that are stopping my voice. Um, and so we've, we've, we're making our own platform that will compete with Facebook and Instagram. Um, there are some people who don't like me uh, because there are some questions that have been asked in interviews or along the way. People ask me about my opinion about everything and uh, if they want an honest answer, I give them an honest answer. And not everybody likes an honest answer. And so, um, in America, we have this thing called cancel culture. And uh, I got kicked out of a bank. I had a grenade in my house. I had a spying drone over my home. And uh, we've been uh, algorithmed and shadow banned off social media quite a lot. I was the number one Facebook page in the world in 2013. And that was when I was with 10 presidents and governments and reaching 300 million people in one year. And so I've been kicked off YouTube, uh, many other things that people don't know. So these are the things where over the last three years, I think a lot more has come to the surface about doing what we can to not get angry at people, but to create our own solutions. Uh, that, if, that if I don't want to be canceled and I do want to reach the world, um, sometimes you have to come up with your own solutions. So I'm a banker now. We started our own bank. And so when the world says you're not good enough, but you know your convictions, um, anything is possible. Some people ask me, will I ever stop speaking? Um, I don't think so, but motivationally, I have. Um, I'm not doing tours anymore. I'm doing uh, more master classes, um, working with schools, and doing pre-recorded content for schools all around the world. And uh, that helps me to also stay with my kids and, uh, and my wife. And um, we will still travel whenever we feel to, but it's definitely a, a new season for me after doing that for 20 years straight. I really am afraid of the future. To tell you the truth, I think uh, in two years when you look at the world and people ask me what do I see, I, uh, I believe that we haven't seen yet the repercussions of um, some decisions that countries have made, um, whether that's economically and never teaching people how to become entrepreneurs and small and medium business owners where we're just consumers and not producers. I think uh, every country should be teaching people about money and opportunity and producing. I also uh, uh, believe that there are some geopolitical pressures uh, that are happening apart from unfortunately the uh, we're praying for peace in Ukraine, we're praying for peace in Israel. Um, we pray for the world. 
But I really believe that uh, we may have to go back to the basics soon in food security. I think uh, the last three years, it's not that, I'm not going to say it this way, that more bad has happened just because more bad people, let's say, are out there or bad circumstances are out there. I think we are more aware of the world around us and the powers that be uh, that do want, in some terminology, control and uh, even doing social experiments that have not really been tested and proven. I am dreaming about changing the world. I believe that a lot more change can happen in the world. There are 70 million sex slaves in the world. There are 2 billion hungry people. And I really believe that a small amount of non-corrupt money can be united to build hospitals and schools and orphanages. And so me and my wife, we want to start doing that. Um, and I really believe that when you do one city at a time or one country at a time, um, that we can do a pilot to truly see that no one dies because of hunger or a lack of medicine. I've been around the world and I've seen all sorts of things and I will do my best to inspire many people. So the dream is if we could inspire 200 million people to give $2 a day, it's $146 billion a year. And I think a lot of good things can happen if that's stewarded correctly. And so that's the dream that I have 12 years from now. So I've given myself 12 years to get to that point. I think my biggest regret is that I didn't believe earlier in the power of digital communication. I was early, I was very early, but I think I traveled more than I would looking back now. I would travel less. I am very happy. I'm a very, very happy person. Um, do I still go through depression? Yeah, in February 2021, um, I was depressed. I went through counseling. I went through 10 hours of counseling. Uh, Nick Vujicic is the motivator. And so to be depressed was something that I had to come to terms with. Um, it's funny how psychology works. Um, I was going through a lot in 2019, 2020 and 2021. But the counselor said, so what do you want to talk about? And I said, I want to talk to you about 2002, 2003, 2006, 2007. And it was all about one guy who hurt me very badly. And I think when you realize that wounds are wounds, but until I actually went through counseling, there were some wounds that I continued to lick and go back to that place. Um, now, those wounds are battle scars because I've truly been healed. And it was quite a simple therapy, therapeutic session where he asked me what happened, he asked me how I felt, and is there anything else I want to say about the topic? And you would think this is so simple, this is so silly, but actually it changed my life. So, am I happy? I am very happy. Uh, my joy, um, apart from my faith in Jesus, is my family and time with them. And this is my last tour for 2023. And I don't do any more motivational things, but uh, we will go through Latin America next year uh, to go through the nonprofit organization and plant seeds of love, hope, and faith. If I had an opportunity to live my life again, I would choose to have no limbs. Because having no limbs forced me to think through my life differently. It forced me to become stronger. I went through a lot of pain.
but looking back, it's kind of made me who I am today. <laughs>